All right, William sent. Welcome to the whiskey. Thank you. Welcome to the William Shepard vault. I'm Rex. This is Daniel. Weddell. Yes. Is. I just remember Weddell with fond memories of the days when Weddell was the one who sent all of the stuff. Thanks, and we Mitch. never could keep you up. Yeah. Thanks, Mitch. You got me the whiskey I deserved. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, Mitch. You got me the whiskey I deserved. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, Mitch. You got me the whiskey I deserved. Thanks, Mitch. You got me the whiskey I deserved, and you helped my entire family. But he sends some good stuff sometimes. But I'm picking through some of his stuff to do things people can actually get, which is nice, right? Sometimes. So, hey, well to go. Wait, where to go? Titan, somewhere in the distance, probably to Rex's left. Ta Tam Nuvulin. Yeah, so here's Tam how random this is. Tam Nuvulin. I haven't even heard of this distillery. Tam Nuvulin. But it's been around for a while. It's not Lagavulin. Yeah, no, it's Tam Nuvulin. It's Tam Nuvulin. Tom Nuvulin. Um, Speyside. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Where is it? There it is. My thing closed. Okay, so six full size stills in the Speyside distillery. What is a full size still? Like, like six massive stills. This is a big production. Okay. This is not. Like a little mom and pop shop. Are they fairly right? new? Are they ramping up? Well, What's the deal? They're new compared to some of the, you know, hundreds of years old, but 1966 is when they started. Oh. And then they sort of like. Well, why have we not then, heard about Tam Nivulin if it's been around for since 66 and they got giant still? Because it's kind of local and they went quiet for like 12 years. How do you go and local and quiet with here's six the giant thing. stills? We've talked, I, I was talking with somebody about this actually last week. It's funny, in America, if something is unused for two years, someone like buys it up, renovates it, shuts everything down, turns it into a you know, bistro or something. Yeah. In Scotland, you can have a distillery that's shuttered. It'll either be... But with all the equipment, it's all there. Yeah. And it's not going anywhere. It's just a fully functioning distillery with the doors locked. So my... And it'll sit there for decades. My read on that situation is... Alert, uh, uh, what often happens is a giant umbrella corporation yes. that owns a lot of these distilleries. Yep. They will shutter a distillery to keep the option open. Yep. But there's nobody working there. So they still leave it alone. Yeah, they make so much money doing other brands and other stuff. It's fine. It's they like if I need an up. option to expand with this kind of equipment, then I have it here. But they keep yep. the option open for decades sometimes. So these guys reopened in 2007. Yeah. This is the same people who own uh, Jura and Dalmore. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. White we, and McKay. Yeah, those also are, the famous blends. Of we White and we like uh, they, they've had good Juras Woo. and Dalmore. A lot of people hate on it for the coloring. I'm but starting. We to, think it tastes good. I'm starting to find that the space side marker that I keep finding over and over and over is that musty malt barley funk with sweetness. Yeah, but with, I find in all these space sides with a lot of sugar, but not earth, mm -hmm. but grain. Yeah, yeah. Sweet, They're always grain sweet forward and malty. That's that's going to be a new marker for me when I pick up a whiskey. I used to be butterscotch was what led me down the path to Speyside. Yeah, that wind is picking up. It is. Oh, it got dark too. I'm getting uh, green grapes. Yeah, zesty. Uh huh. With that malty, that malty barley funk. This is a double cask, so this is an example of the finishing mm -hmm. at the episode we did. Where it started in bourbon, then moved to sherry. Not a blend of bourbon and sherry. Green grapes and like a fruity white wine. Very. Fruity. I am getting the the stewed fruit ending, mm. but it's very very last. Hmm. Yeah. 
It's mild. Kind of flat on list. Are you getting that? I'm not getting flat. What's the proof on this? I'm getting 40, yeah. I'm getting the flavors that are there. Mm-hmm. They're very cohesive. Like they've melded together yeah. very well. Yeah. Kind of one note. And 40%. You know what? That's more flavor than I would I would have said like 46. I I would not have gone that way. So you're saying flat. I think I'm getting more liveliness than you are. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, evidently you are. I would have guessed, I mean, I wouldn't have gone above 43 if I would have guessed 40 right out of the gate. Just for that, I'm going to add a little water. Typically at 40, I'm going to find, um, it feels like it's been watered down. Yeah. This, I don't get. Go ahead. No! <laughs> I can't do it. It's like dropping soap in, soap in the shower. And I got to keep watching my back now. I don't get a watered down character. I get a soft character. But you know how something, you're gonna have something created for a flavor, like a juice or a Coke or something. And that's where the flavor is nice. You add some water, like Kool-Aid. Perfect yeah. example. If you accidentally overwater a Kool-Aid, yep. it's like this is not where the Kool-Aid wants to be. Right. With most, with most 40% whiskeys. <laughs> oh that's probably the first time that's ever been uttered as, as a sentence. This is not where the Kool-Aid <laughs> wants to be. This is just not where the Kool-Aid wants to be. <laughs> Can you imagine the kids sitting down and a mom puts some Kool-Aid? Like, you're overwatered it, mom. Mom, this, this is, is not, not where the Kool-Aid Kool wants to be. <laughs> I do remember as a kid making stronger Kool-Aid on purpose. Though. Oh, yeah. Like, getting two scoops of the powder yeah. instead of one. And, and most 40% scotch, particularly, uh, it feels like it's often past the point of where those flavors really want to be and it's starting to feel watered down. I'm not getting a, a watered down, overly di uh, diluted experience on the taste here. I admit it is lighter and softer because it's a 40%. Right. But I think the flavors at that 80 proof, pretty damn good. They feel like they're, they're rich enough to be respectable. But they're very, to be fair, very, very common Speyside flavors. Mm -hmm. Like we've had this in Speyside. Over and over. Scores of times. Yeah, it's just good, but not remarkable. Mm -hmm. If you like Speyside, I think you would be well served. You'd be happy shop. with it. Sure. I don't know that you would prefer it, mm -hmm. but you'd be fine if someone served it to you. What's your favorite Speyside day? What do you like? What's your go-to? Glendronic. Glendronic, sure. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of a heavier, darker fruits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. We got the... Wait a minute. What is... What is is Longmorn? What is Longmorn? Longmorn is space side, but I don't see. I don't put Longmorn into the normal category. It's like it, Meet Joe Black for me. It's, an it's like, what's your favorite movie? Well, it's Meet Joe Black. Right. But if you remove Meet Joe Black, right. now I can't decide because there's so many. So good you consider movies. Longmorn an outlier? An outlier. Right, yeah. Fair enough. Drake Woodruff. Daniel, the last time I saw you, I saw the list. You had me down as Duke, not Drake. Yeah, I did. that's true. I went and checked. It was. I'm going to blame it on his handwriting. I guess I could be now known as Duke of the Vaults. Carry on, you bees. Yeah. Duke of the Vault. Yeah. yeah, we don't have any Dukes. Yeah. Yeah. Because here's the thing. There's a very common phrase that I toss around as often as possible. Yeah. Blasting Dukes. Blasting, yeah. He, <laughs> does, he does toss that around. Yeah. You, don't want to, you don't want to be a Duke. Yeah. <laughs> Within a quarter mile radius of the property. Because <laughs> Duke means very... Very different things here. <laughs> it's, not, it's not English heraldry. Yeah. Uh, or maybe it is, depending on your view of the royals. <laughs> Lady Lilith Parker. I'm calling corsages sleeve flowers from now on. <laughs> Wait, this is the best part. Chad, be praised. <laughs> what? Whatever. What if, like, the god of all whiskey was named Chad? <laughs> oh, great Chad! <laughs> Grant me your wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> it really is Chad. Chad. <laughs> that sentence. Chad be praised. It has to be said in a monotone like that. No, like, movement to it. Guide me into the purpose of your infinite perfection, also known as Chad moves. <laughs> Chad moves. Chad be praised. Such a Chad move. <laughs> it's, a, 
It's like, this whiskey to the chard. goes well with my sleeve flower, chard be praised. <laughs> to the chard. Forever and always, chard. <laughs> May you always reign. Uh, I think if this had a lot of marketing money behind it, mm. it could go shoulder to shoulder with uh, much better known brands. Yeah. Because it's not missing a step with stuff that's a lot more popular. Yeah. It's I just could. not doing anything that a lot of these bigger brands that are already more established are already doing. Right. Also agree. Here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. You steal, and may you steal your liver, sorry. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with Chad. <laughs> Chad be praised. Glory to the Chad. <laughs>